Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and tackle some of this smart player stuff. <laughs> Just for a few minutes at least. And we'll see uh, how much I hurt everybody. So here's kind of the scoop. As most of you know, when you have a video here and you go to produce it, so I'm going to go to produce and share. And this is the same in Camtasia 8 as it is in Camtasia 9, so there's no real difference here. On the presets, you have several different options. You can produce out just a raw video file itself, okay, in either 720p or 1080p HD, but you may have noticed or you maybe even worked with a couple of these other options which say MP4 with Smart Player. Okay, the Smart Player is a video player, video player software that TechSmith provides with which you can view your MP4 video file. Here's the scoop. If you want to watch a video, you got to have a player. Okay, if it's a .mp4 video file and you double click on it, there is some kind of software residing on your machine or somewhere or being provided that is capable of opening up that file type of video and playing it and providing you with like a play button, a volume control, and you know any number of other pause or rewind all of those features and functions come from the video player that is displaying literally it's only it, it, what it does is displays the video file that you created okay so TechSmith provides a player that has some kind of interesting features such as a table of contents right so let's say in a video in fact I'll open up a sample project here to walk you through it okay so here on the timeline I just have a very simple project with some callouts I got me a red one I got me a blue one uh, a green one a gray one and here I have a little button that says click me so the way we create uh, a table of contents I'm gonna show my marker view uh, with control M so all I did was I dropped markers at the beginning of each of these little topics so this is topic one topic two and again my content is just some callouts okay but I just wanted to make a real sh short little thing that demonstrates that to create a table of contents what you do is you drop a marker wherever you want a entry in the table of contents to appear okay so that's what I have here and then on this last one uh, another feature that TechSmith provides is something called a hotspot so if I click on this guy and go to callouts I basically have made this callout clickable so when somebody clicks it's going to jump to the TechSmith URL so from a video standpoint that's kind of cool right you could have buttons right inside your video people can click them and it will take them wherever you want them to go and that's all well and cool as long as you're producing with the TechSmith smart player here's the problem <laughs> to embed the TechSmith smart player in other words this video when I produce it in just a second on an existing web page like oh I don't know my WordPress blog right or maybe a sales page that I have all kinds of HTML on I want a video on it and have the link clickable well it's a nightmare and you'll feel my pain in just a moment but there are some things that we can do to kind of ease that pain so my content I want to produce with a smart player because so I want a table of contents and I want this clickable link so the way I get that is I'm going to go to produce and share once I've you know configured all my content there put the markers and all that good stuff 
and you can use one of the presets here with the smart player I, I don't usually do that because you can't change any of the options so I'm going to demonstrate using custom settings so let's click next and see I want mp4 with the smart player okay and it's all HTML5 and all that good stuff so that's all good I can pick um, you know some look and feel here I'm gonna have the table of contents auto hide and I'm gonna have the video paused at the start so to embed this player on my blog let's just go to my blog for a second I'll just go ahead and view the post we're gonna come back and work on this in a second most blogs especially blog posts have a certain width don't they like right here so my player my video needs to fit in this width and I know on my blog this is eh, somewhere in the 600 pixel range okay this kinda drives me nuts <laughs> so I want the size of the video uh, to be like 600 pixels and you can't do it it requires a width of 640 at least okay fine 640 but anytime I click off I literally cannot change this and Rich maybe you and I can have the discussion later in the Facebook group on why that is but anyhow so basically I'm just gonna leave the defaults here because I'll show you how to fix it and then of course you can change other things like settings and under options if you have markers it will give you the option to add a table of contents so yes I would I would love to do that so we're just going through the the normal production process say next and here we can preview the table of contents I can rename you know the topics and have thumbnails and blah 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 all of that good stuff so when I go to finish this Camtasia is gonna spit out all of the files in a folder that I where I designate it okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up that folder so all I did was say produce and Camtasia creates that folder and puts all these files inside of it all of these files these are our video files these are mp4 files and I produced it out one per marker which is one of the options but the punchline is that to use the Camtasia smart player requires all of these files and these subdirectories okay and it's just an unholy mess if you're familiar with embedding a video from YouTube you go to YouTube and you say I want to embed this video on my website and it spits out an embed code you copy that code you know it's just a couple lines you paste it on your web page and boom it just works so here's kinda of the, the the thing to use the smart player Camtasia spits out all of these files and what we need to do is upload all of these files and all of the directories intact to your web server okay and I'm gonna go ahead and in this example use Amazon s3 because that's where we we put our video files so let's jump over to Amazon for a second here's the, the directory that I I put it on and again this could be your own website I highly recommend Amazon s3 because it's basically your own personal website in the sky <laughs> and it's wicked fast and dirt cheap so I basically just upload this entire folder this entire folder to Amazon okay everybody with me so far is this painful <laughs> wait it gets worse 
So here, here are all those files. And to be able to embed it on my website, I'm just going to walk through this, you know, with uh, not a ton of explanation, just to kind of show you how. Oh, and by the way, Rich Wersinger has a really good tutorial, a couple of tutorials on how to do this also. What I'm going to show you right now is a little twist. So we'll put Rich's link in there for sure. So we've spit out all of these files. So here is the ugly part of the process. Uploading them to your server or Amazon, no big deal. What we need to look at are a couple of these, these files in particular. The first one is, is an HTML file that if we actually, I think we can load this, right? So if you load this file, this is what the video looks like. Okay, and it's rolling, it's rolling. Here's my table of contents. It jumps to the next topic. If I want to go to topic four, I can click. You know, so I have all the, the player controls, the table of contents, and at the end, let's pause this. This link is clickable. Boom. Takes me to a website. Right? So that is this file right here. It's like I say it's an HTML file. So the way we do this is we're going to open this up in a HTML editor. You could open it up just with notepad. I'm going to use my little editor. And what you are looking for, remember I said on YouTube you get an embed code, which is awesome. And it's usually an stuff that says iframe. So I'm going to copy all of this stuff, this, just this iframe code, copy. I'm going to go to my blog and into my post. And since it's um, HTML, we have to be on the text tab. So let's just kind of do this from scratch. So I'm going to paste that code. Now if you're familiar with HTML code at all, the problem that we're going to run into is that this is going to call the player code, which is another HTML file. It's basically this guy. You notice there are two HTML files. This one provides the player and this is the or main code. So we have a player right here. Let's go back to Amazon and what I need to get is the full path for that player. So I'm going to go to the properties for this and right click and copy this URL. Let's go back to my post here and you need to paste this in right to replace the existing name. And the reason we do that is because now we have a full path to where this file actually is on the internet. If we didn't have the full path, then the iframe wouldn't know uh, where is this file because it's up on the server. All right, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to update this post. Nancy says this is incredibly painful. Isn't it though? But don't worry, it's all going to get uh, easier when I get my plug-in done. I, I, if nothing else, this will demonstrate what a pain in the ass this is. So, let's go look at the, the, the visual tab. And the first thing you'll notice is that, well, actually, let's just uh, preview, preview that. And there's my player, but it's teeny tiny. Oh, that's not that's just not going to work at all for me. So here's kind of the trick. If we go back to the text box, and I should have kind of pointed this out before, there was no width or height when we pasted it in. Once we went to visual and go back to text, all of a sudden now there's a width and a height parameter. So for my blog, I, I happen to know that like 580 wide 
and we want to maintain our aspect ratio so that would be 326 and if I update it now and go to view post now boom all of a sudden it works if you think that was bad you used to have to mess with some CSS code as well <laughs> but this actually seems to work so uh, Rich I'm sure you'll probably jump on testing that for me that would be awesome okay so at some point in time if you ever want to do this you probably have to go back and watch like Rich's tutorial or watch the replay of this tutorial but that's basically how you do it and that's all I'm going to talk about the smart player because yeah it's it's a trip now that's the bad news the good news is there is one option that is wicked easy if you want to use the smart player and that is if you share produce and share to screencast.com that is TechSmith's website they host it and in fact let's just jump over there for a second okay and you can sign up for a free account you can get a free account there uh, and you can upload like I think it's two gigabytes of videos and you'll get a couple of gigabytes of bandwidth but uh, let's just pick one oh, that's not a good example I need one with a table of comments contents here we go so here's a smart player test If I play this you see it has a table of contents right and here's I guess it's share the interface has changed a little bit let's try share right see this embed code and you I'll set my size so on my blog I know I want what 590 okay and then here's kinda where I got my other parameter before so let's copy this go back to the blog edit the post and again on the text tab let's put this in update and view the post boom okay it just works the downside is that you have to host on screencast.com and Michelle likes them it, it's okay it's gonna kinda be you're gonna chew through two gigabytes pretty quick as a rule especially if you're doing it seriously for like a training course or something like that so you know it, it's a good option if you want you really 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 want to use the smart player and don't want to go through all the, the pain that we we did with this okay so that's your kind of saving grace for the time being until I get my plug-in done that kind of thing all right um, any questions let's get off of that because that just makes my head hurt and I'm a software engineer oh, it's just ugly I don't know why TechSmith doesn't let us embed or create an embed thing but I actually contacted them and they were all kinds of excited that I was gonna build something myself so there you have that <laughs>